Hello and welcome to Crantock Art in Western Supermare in the southwest of England. Today I'm going to show you how to actually make a tortoise. This tortoise is a little bit special because his shell comes off and then inside you've got a little storage pot, trinkets or whatever. Hide your sweets if you want to. This is going to be a slab build and I've had the templates here and I will give you a quick demonstration on how to make a template. However, the template is also available uh, for sale on our Etsy shop. Uh, if you'd like to support us, then uh, you're quite welcome to buy the template and save yourself some time. And the details of which will be in the description at the end. So, let's put it to one side. So this is the template. There's actually three parts of the template, one of which is not actually on the system. You have to work it out for yourself, and I'll explain why in a minute. But we've got the main basic part of the body and we have the shell. And if you want to have a go at making this yourself, that part of the body is actually round. And then we have a round shell to go over the top. So you want to make a, a round piece and then another piece that's probably just a little bit bigger, about uh, half an inch, a centimetre, something like that, bigger all the way around. And then you add a head and legs onto the side of your round piece and your tail. So, as usual, I've already cut out the pieces that I need, so I've got them here. So there's the, there's the shell there, which I should put to one side. We've got the body. We also need a strip of clay. Now, this is uh, going to be the length of a 12-inch ruler and about uh, three-quarters of an inch, that's two centimetres high. And this is going to make the bowl. So while our tortoise is still flat, we're going to attach this. And what I do, first of all, is I lay it onto the body. And it comes right up to the sides here, all the way around, and then curves around behind the tail. And it should make a perfect circle. So if you're making your own template, you'll have to work out the length of this strip for yourself. But it's going to go around like that. So having put it on, and I'm going to take it back off again, and I've, where I've put it, I can just see a very faint mark that shows me where it's going to stick. Then I'm just going to score that off a little bit. All the way around, where that mark is, make sure it sticks properly, like that, and then on the side of the strip, I'm going to score that as well, all the way along. If you're not sure what scoring is, it is just simply making very light cuts into it. What I tell our beginners is to put crosses all the way down it. Another way of making sure that you've got it well scored. And this just helps it stick better. If you've ever done plastering, it's the same idea. You rough up the wall before you put the plaster on. Then I'm going to get some slip. So this again is just scraps of clay mixed up with a bit of water to make something nice and sloppy. It's going to act as our glue. We paint that on all the way around. There. And then we position it, sticky side down, following the marks we made to start with. So again, making sure it comes right up to the edge, tucks around there. I don't want overhanging, so we tuck it in there. And get it to meet up like that. So that's going to make our bowl. Now, next thing to make sure it's going to stay put, first of all, I'm just going to go around and give it a little wiggle all the way around. That helps just to bed it in, make it stick, like that. then I'm going to get a bit of, a bit of clay here and I'm going to make a coil. Let's take my ring off because it leaves patterns on the coils otherwise. We need enough coils to be able to go around all the inside and the outside. It doesn't have to necessarily be long coils. Doesn't matter for the short ones as long as we've got enough of them. And some people find rolling coils really difficult. You end up with flat ones. There's a number of reasons that can happen. One is your dry clay is too dry. So make sure it's moist enough that it can be manipulated into shape. Secondly, you might be pressing too hard. And that's a, a common mistake when you first start out. Or you might not be rolling far enough. The clay has to have a good 360 degree twist in order to get it even. 
Okay. Next then, I'm going to paint slip all around the inside there. I'm going to get my coils and tuck them in on the inside like that. Another one around here. Okay, and then a little one up the join on the inside of that piece there. Then I'm going to work them in. Now, a number of tools you're going to need, which I haven't gone through. Uh, you're obviously going to need a knife. That's going to be coming very handy. You're going to need a paintbrush. That's going to be used to make the eyes. You're going to need a rolling pin, guide sticks. The main part of the body I've actually rolled to about a centimetre thick. So it's, that's that thick. I have these, these guide sticks are six millimetres in one direction, one centimetre in the other. So if you stand them on the edge like that, you can roll out a thicker slab. So I've made the base a thicker slab thinner slab for the top. Also useful to have a bottle top and a piece of cling film and the middle of a toilet roll and some newspaper. So also great for smoothing lollipop sticks. So I'm going to get this lollipop stick and I'm just going to use it to go around pushing the clay down onto the bottom of my tortoise. This is back all the way around like that. You can do this with your fingers if you want. If you haven't got anything to hand, back end of a teaspoon, you can use that as well. That works just as well. Whilst in the world of pottery, it looks like there's some wonderfully, really expensive tools. Actually, when it comes down to it, you don't need them. Your fingers and tools you can find around the house will do most things you want. Just the professional ones can make it a little bit easier. So having gone around that way, I'm now going to brace my hand around it to support it, and then I'm going to push it up onto that side strip all the way around. Don't worry about the fact that it looks really rough at the moment. The important thing at this point is to actually get it all fixed, and then we can worry about making it smooth and pretty in a minute. to do now is to smooth it and this is where a good old finger comes in so just smooth it round with my finger take away any excess at this point okay. be quite firm with it but support it so you're not going to push the whole thing to pieces okay. see how it's starting to tidy up and an extra bit there come off Around. So you want this to be reasonably tidy because this is going to be where you're going to be putting things in and out and storing them, especially if you end up storing sweets or something like that in here. We will almost certainly be doing a kids group on this, I suspect. My uh, partner has got very excited about the idea of doing a kids group doing tortoises that they can use as hidden storage pots love that something they, where they think they can hide things their parents can't find so done all the inside you see how nice and smooth I've got that all the way around now now I'm going to do the outside I need a very thin coil here I don't want to overdo it but I just want to make sure that it's not going to come apart and you can see the crack there so I'm going to put a bit of slip on that and I'm going to put a little coil in again I'm going to do that all the way around I'm not worrying about scoring this. Somebody once asked, why don't I score everything? You don't need to if it's a little piece like this and you're going to work it in well. You don't need to score. Okay. Let's make sure I've cleared your slip to do the job. I wetted this slip up before the session and it is particularly gloopy and lovely. That's a little bit too gloopy, but we'll see. Okay, so again... A little bit along the side here. And build that in. Okay, there. And there. One of the first things we teach beginners on our classes 
is how to make foils. Very first session, they do uh, pinch pot animals, and you have to have coils to join the pinch pots together. So you can do an awful lot of them, and it helps if you can do them. To join things up, let's do another one, and nice long rolls, nice and round, even. in the lollipop stick again and again push it up onto the side so I'm just going to brace it to make sure I don't squish it up on the side down onto the bottom all the way around it's quite important to do this on the outside on the first ones I experimented with I didn't and I found that as you shape your tortoise the bowl starts to crack away so it's you end up with a bit of a looking a bit unsightly so so uh, it's a good idea to do this. Okay, all around like that. Smooth it out. So I'm using the tool the stick as well, just to scrape off the surplus. So I'm filling in the joint, but also making it nice and even as I go. Oh, that's the join, so let's just fix that in. Yeah. Put him around his bum, to his tail. You want to try not to distort this ring too much. quite difficult to do but if you sort of support it and try not to put too much pressure on it you should be okay if you can hear somebody else in the background that's our student honey she's here with us for a week she's cutting out pieces for me for another video I'm going to make later on And now just go around it, smooth it. And as always, if you find it's difficult to smooth it, things are actually ending up rougher. It's because your hands need a bit of a clean. If you get too much clay on them, you're just rubbing the clay around. So all you need to do is just put a little bit of water on your hands, dry them off. So not not wet hands. Be able to smooth it. Okay, right. so, ooh, it's a bit a bit rough around the tail here. I'll just tidy that up. Get this tool in there as well. Okay, so we have our dish, now to turn it into something resembling a tortoise. And this is where the newspaper and the toilet roll come in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to stuff it with newspaper, give it a bit of strength. In case you're wondering, we're not going to fire this in place, all it's going to do is hold our tortoise up. So stuff it all in, so it's quite firm. And you want to flatten it a bit, you don't want it quite round. So that's going to be a base for our fella to sit on. Then, very carefully lift him up. Put that down and lay him over the top. So at the moment, he's sort of balanced like that on the roll. Then we shape his feet down. There. And there. This is why you have to have the coil on, because otherwise this will start to separate around the feet. And then we just shape the feet a bit. So see it's cracking there already. So we just smooth that in. Okay. Same round here. Smooth the crack in a bit. So make sure his feet reach the ground. So just shape them a little bit. Make them a little longer. So that all four feet stand on the board. Make sure it's standing up. And there's no cracks forming. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I want the, the bowl at the moment is quite curved over the top of that, so I'm just going to press that down a bit as well. So I want it fairly, fairly flat and just bring the sides in so it becomes a little bit squarer than it was before, like that. Next, we're going to do his head. He's looking a bit droopy at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to squeeze this in over my finger and make it a little bit curved, like that. Then I'm going to get a bit of newspaper. I 
think he'll be all right, but I am going to just give his head a little bit of support. Right, so I'm going to squeeze that in, give him a little bit of a head, a little bit of a face. Now, if you want to, at the moment he's quite curved there. If you want to, you can actually bring that right in and smooth it off. So it looks a little bit more like a face. Depends on how accurate you want it to be. You might even need to add a little bit more clay in there if you want, to give him a natural real face rather than just a resemblance of one. Put a bit more clay in. I'm just going to smooth it down, but that's entirely up to you. You can leave it sort of curved, which works just as well. Just remember, there's no competitions about this. Nobody's going to judge you as to how you make your piece. This is your own creation. I'm just going to wet my hands up a bit because I'm getting a bit mucky. A bit of kitchen roll there to dry them off. Okay, that'll make it easier now to smooth it in. He is. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paintbrush and I'm going to give him some eyes on each side of his head, on there, on there. Okay, so they are in line. Okay. Right. Persuade him a bit more to stand still because he's wobbling a bit, so his feet aren't on the ground yet. I right, can't make. Okay, tuck that in again. So we have our basic tortoise bowl now for the shell so here's the shell as it stands at the moment just a round piece which is going to fit on there but if i just put it on like that straight away you can see it starts to collapse so that's the newspaper it's making newspaper ball not too big that will fit into there so that's that's probably going to be too much but let's put it over the top and see Probably, even if I shape it, you can see it's still a bit too proud. So I'll take a bit of that paper away. Try again. I'm trying to make the top part where the shell's going to sit fairly even and smooth because the clay will pick up that texture. That might be better. Let's put that on now. Oh, yes, that's going to work. So now let's put him out the way for a minute while we work on the shell. So first thing I'm going to do with the shell is all the way around, let's just bring his shell over for a moment so you can see, all the way around I'm going to draw, roughly draw a circle about a centimetre and a half, half an inch, all the way round. But I'm not going through, all I'm using is the back of my tool, actually I might use a lollipop stick be safer than and I won't accidentally cut it. And I'm just going to go around freehand, marking that all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nature isn't. Nope. About. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to use my lollipop stick to just make some segments. So I'm using the side of it, push down, which I can make the segments around the shell. That. Okay. Then we decide which is the front, which is the back of the shell, and we start to put some nobles in it. This is where this comes in handy. So we have a bottle top here. This is a metal one. You just use a plastic one. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter too much about the size, but don't go for a too bigger one. In order to stop this sticking to the clay, I'm going to wrap it up in cling film or food wrap, depending on which country you're from. Okay, and that will then, although that will stick, it's easier to peel out. Then I get this and I find the middle. So I turn it upside down. There's the middle about there. And I get my cap like that. And I'm going to push it into the clay and shape the clay on the top around it like that. Okay, so I've got like a, like a pimple. Take that out, move it forward. There, do it again. Shape it around the cap. And you start to get the sort of the, the shape that you get in a tortoise's shell. Then go to the, there, around the back. So down the front, out to the back, get that in place. Just make sure I'm not going over the top. That's it. 
and squish it down over the cap. Okay. So we're starting to get that sort of knobbly effect you get with a tortoise's shell. Then I'm going to do the sides. So again, I line it up so I'm not going over what I've already done. Push it in. Use my fingers on the other side to just shape it round the cap. Okay, and again, there. Like that. Okay. See, it's starting to turn into a tortoise's shell. Same again there. Oop. Can be a little bit tricky because you're going to try and it's like trying to hold three things at once. That in there. One more there. Sweep it in. Okay. Now I might have to redo the one in the middle because I've squished it a bit during my. Okay. And we have our lumpy shell. Right. Oh, back to our tortoise. Wrong tortoise. Let's try the other one. That's the one I did earlier. Right. Come back here, mate. <sighs> So now, again, making sure you know which is the front and which is the back. I've lost my front. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm, I, to make my front a bit more obvious, I actually cut or pressed it in at an angle there, so I knew that was going to be the front of the shell. So now we put it on like that. Okay, make sure the newspaper's nice and even. And we shape it a bit, so it needs to go a bit further forward. So I want it crimped over his head a bit like that and crimped over his tail. Make sure that it covers the sides of your tortoise. If necessary, squeeze your tortoise in a bit. Mine's gone a bit. It's had a few too many lettuce leaves. It's gone a bit fat. So let's tuck him in a bit. Better. Okay. And there he is. That's it. Basically finished. That's just a matter of tidying him up. If you wanted to add some more texture to the body, you could. But just reshape the shell, make sure the shell's the shape you want it, and that it's covering all the sides. And there we have him. One finished tortoise. On the one I did, I probably pressed it a bit deeper than I've done on this one, but that's up to you as to how much texture you want to put in. And of course, you don't have to stick to doing it shell like. You can actually do other patterns on it instead, rather than make it sort of tortoise-like. It could actually have patterns on it, it scraffito on it. You've got a nice blank canvas there to work on to do whatever you wanted with. Okay, well, that's it. That's this session. As I say, the template will be available on Etsy. Uh, in the description underneath the uh, video, you will find where to, to locate it. Uh, it's £4. I'm not sure what that is in American or any other like, any other type but because it's on Etsy and it's a download you can get it anytime you like uh, and help to support our work a bit. Uh, in the meantime I'll uh, catch you again later. Bye!